So in regards to uh, to the UK, so results of uh, this weekend's uh, elections, the mayor of London is a Muslim, the mayor of Bing Birmingham, Muslim, Leeds, Blackburn, Sheffield, Oxford, Luton, Oldham, Rochdale, Muslims. And not just Muslims like you wanna, mm. you, you can meet in Dubai, right? The, the extremist. These are the guys that are now ruling the UK. People are shocked. I've seen a, a short video of a lot of Muslims, like with the the women with the with the dressing, yeah, yeah. just marching in London. Thousands of them. Thousands. <laughs> That's the UK? And this is, this is almost a very difficult, like even from like, I'm 34 years old. I remember when I was a child, it was very different. But if you look at the crazy shit that's happening now, like a friend of mine, uh, sent, and this is why so many people are moving to Dubai who can, who have money from the UK, you don't have to pay tax and it's super safe. There was, I think four or five days ago, someone was running around with a sword and stabbed five people. Like an actual sword, like by a tube station on them. Like, because the problem is the country's lost complete control in terms of that point of view in almost like an identity of who you are. And also secondly, in terms of like the government's ability to control its people, police have no control and um, no one has any control. And that's why I think it's interesting if you look at like a company, a country like Dubai, technically a dictatorship has one leader who's basically like, this is what's happening, this is what goes. Yeah. It's like a perfect society because everyone knows what the rules are, everyone knows what needs to be done. Um, there's very, very low taxes, safest place in and the world. And these are Muslims as well. These are Muslims. The true Muslims. But they're different. And this is where, for me, that's been a very interesting experience because I grew up in a, a white private school. There was like one person who wasn't white in my primary school. So like, and I now live in Arabic countries. So it's a completely different perspective. And now I can see like how amazing like Muslim, um, Muslim religion is when you actually see like the benefits of it. But even when you can't live in Western Europe, we only see the negatives and maybe the shit that happens in the UK in terms of why there's so much like conflict. But if you look at someone like Dubai, for example, Christians, Muslims, atheists, whoever, can all live in complete harmony. So it's why, why can this not happen in the UK? Why can this not happen wherever else? Because there's so much like hate agenda against each other that just gets riled up. Yeah. And the London is so called what? The stabbing capital of the world. It's insane. It's insane. How much time do you spend in the UK? Uh, as little as possible. I went back for, okay, I lost my passport when I was in Las Vegas last year. <laughs> uh, I wasn't drunk, I just don't even, I didn't even drink, so I don't even know what happened to it. So that was a pain. I had to go back to the UK to get a new passport. I was there for four days and then left, and my plan this year is not to go there at all. So like for me, I love the countryside and the greenery and stuff of the UK, but that is gonna be a failed country in my opinion in a lot of respects because of the way it's being run, the economy's not doing well, it's, a sinking ship and if you look back historically and this is what's interesting so I'm coming on to in a minute maybe is that <laughs> the British Empire was the most powerful thing in the world we controlled like 25% of the 100 world 100 years ago yeah with, with a very from a very small little island that's now completely wiped out because we became very soft and I think this is what's interesting with the American election right now if you look at what the U happening with the US I come in and out quite a lot and every time I notice the standard of people in the US is falling I went to Universal World yesterday like 90% of the people are super overweight your population is getting weaker in terms of people. Your empire is failing. And if you look at the other countries in terms of like Russia, China, India, like they're gaining strength quickly. And if you look at what's happening, I think America is slowly losing its ability in terms of being the world leader. And there's gonna to have to be a very drastic change to try and maintain that pole position. But that's not good because mm. the stronger the US is uh, worldwide, the, the better it is for the whole world. Mm. Because it, it relies the economy the world economy is what us and china that's it china is the manufacturer they don't buy a lot they just manufacture a lot if usa fails then the uk fails then the european well, union fails my 
opinion is that Western society is very much going to struggle in the next 50 years. And I think you're very much going to see the rise of the Middle East, Asia, and then probably Africa as well, because they have so much resources, yeah. even in like people, land, actual mineral wealth. And if you look at the Middle East, they have more money than they know what to do. They're literally just pumping it out of the ground now. So obviously that 100 years ago, 200 years ago, what uh, Great Britain did to the whole world is, is not good for with India yeah. and, and et cetera, right? But I want to say they gave up India in the uh, 1950s, 1960s, yeah. something. But so from 1960s, for instance, to 2000, the UK was almost the capital of the world. Mm -hmm. London was the financial mm -hmm. capital of the world. But in the last 10 years, bro, what, it's, 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 un, it's unimaginable. Like you can, the stabbing capital of uh, London. So you've got a nice Rolex on, yeah. on your wrist. You yeah. wouldn't wear it no, in no, London. No, you get your hand cut off. And I, I, like, I've had friends who've walked out of like really expensive nightclubs in Mayfair and someone's smashed them over the back of the head with like a champagne bottle and taken their watch. In London? Yeah, and then like uh, a good friend of mine who has also moved to Dubai, he saw someone get stabbed on his street in, in London. He has kids. He's like, yeah, we're leaving straight away. Because like, this is the reality of when you lose all control of a society and the government is too weak to be able to deal with it because they let people off in terms of prison sentences. Police have like barely any of them have actually have any weapons and so no one listens to them. And it's just become a very soft society where everyone wants like a fucking cuddle and a second place trophy rather than people having the hard, difficult conversation of like, this is a complete fucking mess. Someone needs to deal with it. And that's a lack of really strong leadership and um, almost too many cooks in the kitchen where everyone, everyone wants to talk about solving the problem, but no one actually wants to solve it, if that makes sense. The UK is, I want to say, the second country in the world, right? After the US. So it's definitely number one in the in Europe. It dictates everything. Have you seen? Uh, I would say financially, yes, but I think it's probably losing pace on that to Germany and France. But Germany also has a huge amount of problems as well. Huge now. And people don't realize that. No. We've, I've been to Germany. I've, I've talked to people, uh, fellow Lithuanians that live there. Bro, that's a socialist country mm. that became a true socialist country. Germany with all the manufacturing that they have. Just the automotive, automotive manufacturing, BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, right? They, they, they earn a lot of money, they manufacture, the, the GDP of the country is huge, but they struggle because they let in a lot of illegal immigrants and they pay, they pay uh, salaries to the people for doing nothing. And I think what's interesting now is you see a lot of politicians are playing the voting game by letting loads of immigrants into a country to get the votes. And I think this is what's happening in a lot of these places that they're trying to let big populations of people in to get citizenship so then they can essentially stay in power as a ruling party because if we bring an extra couple of million people in who are all going to vote for us, that could be enough to throw elections easily. But you generally hate your country if you do so because you realize, you know, on the bottom of their heart, you know that they're going to ruin this country. Mm -hmm. They have no chance. They have no, not even a th the single thought of integrating into the society. They bring their country with with themselves. So, And I feel I can say this because I live in a Muslim country as a white guy. Um, I, I remember going around certain areas of the UK and I felt like a foreigner because I was like the only white guy on the street and, and was made to feel slightly uncomfortable about that. And there's areas of the UK that almost like people who are Caucasian wouldn't want to go. Now, I say that because I live in a, an Arabic Muslim country and I'm fully like integrated in that. Mm. And I'm by main, no means a racist, but I'll just call it as it is. Like, it's the fact. And I think that's where the UK has lost its identity in terms of, and I, my opinion is once that's gone, you can't really get that back. Only with, the, with power, mm. with the riots, maybe even, I don't want to say this, but when your own people go against each other. That's the the worst thing that that can happen to a country. But then, if you, even if you look at that perspective, there's more. I'm not going to use the word foreigners because they're British citizens, but more people who are like who weren't originated from the UK than there are people who've now come in. Like it's very very close in terms of like who has the power in terms of the, the numbers. And even if you go to certain areas of Birmingham, certain areas of like London, certain areas of Manchester, wherever, it's it's not what it used to be a long time ago. Someone benefits from this, that's for sure. But they, they're thinking short term, I want to say. Maybe five to ten years. They're going to vote for us. Our party is going to be still in, uh, in Congress on, or in Parliament somewhere else. But in 50 years, you're done. And this is the problem. So this is why I say about Dubai, for, again, for example, you've got one ruler who's in charge. They're not thinking what happens in the next three years. They're thinking what happens in the next 30 years. 
like they've said our goal is to make by 2030 to make Dubai the best place in the world to live they want to double the size of the population like they're very clear very ambitious this is where we're going this is what we want to do if you look at like the UK for example they're trying to go week to week to survive like yeah. how can you have a big vision and achieve that if you can't even look past like next Monday yeah but bro this is Dubai the, the great re- the, the good leader right this is an example of a yeah. good leadership on uh, the same time Iran the same guy for 30 years and they're going nowhere so having a guy who is and ha- n- not having any elections at all it's not a good thing it, it depends on you can have a bad leader and a good leader it depends on the society i think agreeing around it but i think that is very much dependent and you could look at other uh, completely difficult fish but you look at things like saddam hussein for example who was a leader for a very long period of time he probably wasn't always bad but probably fell out of line pretty quickly and you see that with quite a few of them i think where power ultimate power goes to people's heads to some degree mm. but if you have the right core values of a society and a leadership and a, a ruling family then i don't think that's ever going to be an issue i think that's almost the culture of the people in those countries like people in um the uae and dubai are very very kind generally and they want to try and help society as much as they can Whereas you look at some other places in the world where you can you go to the country and it feels like a, a take, 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 like the country's trying to suck as much money out of it from whoever comes in, whereas they don't really have a vision of where they're looking to go. 